Welcome to the Tailoring Talk Show with me, your host, Roberto Rivilla. I'm a bespoke tailor, menswear designer, and owner of Roberto Rivilla London Suit and Shirt Makers. This is the podcast where you drop in for the threads, but often leave with something quite unexpected. If you haven't already, please support the show by subscribing. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please help me out by leaving a rating and a review. Today, I have a little short cast for you, inspired by an invitation that I received last week to an event. And I'm getting asked this question a lot as we run up to Christmas and the events season is underway in earnest. And so here it is. So I received an invitation to a, let's have a look, it's a champagne reception at some, I assume, gallery or something in Hanover Square. It's a property networking reception. Uh, Wealth management and property investment networking reception. Um, So, obviously, what I do is I look at the time and then I look at the dress code because I don't want to turn up either under or overdressed. I mean, come on, let's face it, this is me, so I usually turn up overdressed to just about everything, even a barbecue. Um, so the dress code says business stroke cocktail. Most people look at business stroke cocktail and invite and think, what the, does that mean? And, uh, I have to admit, even I get a little bit confused because, um, in my, in all of our minds, I guess business generally means a suit. Um, and for ladies, it means, you know, either a trouser suit or a skirt suit of some sort. Um, but then cocktail kind of lends itself to being a little bit dressier than a suit. And some people often wonder if that means black tie. Now, cocktail doesn't actually mean black tie. I mean, if they want you in a in a in a dinner suit or tuxedo um, and a, an LBD, a little black dress for the girls, then um, generally they'll put black tie on the invite. So we can get rid of. Uh, thinking about pulling on a bow tie and a dinner suit, get those thoughts out of our minds. So we're left with cocktail, which in my mind is just a step below black tie, but it's just a little bit dressier than you would normally wear to go to the office. But then they go and throw this word business in as well. Um, And I don't know if that's you know, deliberate intention, or if they're just thinking that obviously they're going to have a bunch of people that are coming straight to the office to this event. And, uh, you know, hopefully they'll be wearing a suit. And if they don't wear suits for work, then they don't want them turning up wearing whatever scruffy stuff it is that some of you lot wear to work these days. Um, So how do we deal with this? Let's go ladies first. Um, because generally that's the most polite thing to do. Um, But also it'll be a lot quicker, and then we'll delve into the guy's side of things. Um, But for ladies, and I've canvassed opinion from, you know, personal stylists and, uh, you know, image consultants and so on that I know who are ladies themselves. Um, And the general consensus is that business stroke cocktail for ladies... The the celebrity that probably does this best is former Duchess of Cambridge, I think now Princess of Wales, I should know this, Um, but Princess Kate probably does business stroke cocktail the best out of any lady that is in the public eye. And so when you see her, she's generally dressed kind of dressy, but sort of conservative. Um... So the business side of the business stroke cocktail dress code dress code equation um, means that you should generally stick to the same rules that you might in the office. Um, so hemline that's maybe just above the knee at the very highest, no cleavage, 
nothing terribly flashy, so sort of no neon or sequins, closed toe shoes just to be on the safe side. Um, and then the cocktail side of it means that you just add a little bit of embellishment to the equation. So maybe a standout piece of jewellery, um, a jeweled neckline, uh, maybe a nice bag or clutch, um, you know, that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, keep it keep it classy, um, basically, and uh, you should be completely appropriately attired for such uh, an event demanding this type of dress code. Um, for the guys, as ever, it's more complicated um, because guys generally don't know what to do in most uh, situations when faced with a dress code. Um, but basically, uh, so yeah, so we've already eliminated the, the need for a dinner suit. So at least that's one thing. At the under, other end of the spectrum, we can eliminate the need for jeans and trainers and t-shirts and polo shirts. Um, just forget about even reaching for that sort of stuff. We need to be a little bit smarter. So the easiest thing that you can do is wear a suit maybe embellish it a little bit with a pocket square and uh, try and wear a tie if you can. But if you really hate wearing ties, you need to make sure that your shirt is on point. So none of this baggy, saggy collars, your shirt needs to stand proud. So, um, you know, either get your shirts tailored or get good advice and buy good quality shirts uh, if you're buying off the rack. Um, the other option you've got is you could go, you know, maybe if you gen generally tend to dress casual for work, maybe go a few steps above that. Um, so a jacket, stroke, trouser or smart chino combination um, with a good pair of shoes. Make sure that they're polished and they don't look tatty um, should work as well. Um, so for summer cocktail attire, which obviously is not this time of year, but you could be listening to this episode in summer if you're still sort of catching up on the previous 69 episodes. Um, but in summer, summer cocktail attire basically means lighter colours and lighter materials. So linen, cotton, so that means chino, linen jackets and trousers, linen suits, and you generally tend to pare the outfit down because the sun allows you to loosen up your formality and it loosens up people's expectations about how formal you should be. Um, so uh, so there you can definitely get away without wearing a tie. Um, and then when you move to winter, um, then I guess what I would personally do is I would wear either... Um, very, very um, smart chinos that are well tailored um, or tailored smart trousers in a flannel um, or a, a slightly heavier wool. Um, definitely not something that I've got from a suit. It needs to be a pair of trousers that were bought or made for that purpose. And then you pair them with a blazer or a smart casual jacket or an unstructured smarter casual jacket Again, make sure that it fits you properly. If it's bespoke, you don't have that problem. And if it's off the peg, then just make sure that, you know, you just go see an alterations tailor and just get them to tweak it a little bit so that you actually look like you um, cared and bothered. Sorry if some people find my uh, language offensive, but it's the business that I'm in. And um, actually, I take that apology back because uh, regular listeners will know I don't really apologize for this sort of stuff. Um so, uh, so yeah, and I would definitely wear a shirt. Um, you could, if you've got the right jacket trouser, you could get away with wearing just a sort of smart sweater underneath. If you've got like an unstructured sort of hybrid sweater type jacket, um, uh, you know, a sort of lightweight sweater or roll neck would actually do the job just as well. Um, but I would definitely opt for shirt and tie, not necessarily light colours. Um, I'd probably go quite dark, like a navy shirt with a navy tie or a black shirt even with a black tie. I quite like that sort of combination. Um, uh, that should pretty much sort of tick the boxes. Um... And then, you know, if you're kind of looking for some online inspiration, if you Google search celebrities like 
Mahershala Ali, um, the late, great Chadwick Boseman, um, Timothy Le Chalamet, I think his name is Timothy Chalamet, the guy from Dune, um, and uh, Andrew Scott, um, apart from when he's trying to do black tie and, you know, combine it with cummerbunds and things, he looks like a disaster. Um, Sean Mendes always looks pretty cool uh, when he's out and about as well. Um, Google these guys and uh, and then you'll kind of get an idea. And you can also head to my Instagram page as well, um, which is at Roberto Revilla London. And if you have a little scroll through, um, there will be some images from events that I've attended and you'll be able to see what I get up to. So I hope that little um, this little short episode has helped if this is something that you've been struggling with. I'll look to turn this into an article as well and get that up on the site and also get it up on LinkedIn. You can find me on LinkedIn. Just search Roberto Revilla or Roberto Revilla London. And uh, yeah, that's that's it for this little short one. So you actually got what you were expecting this episode. Um, happy weekend. Thanks so much as ever for joining me. This is the 70th episode of Tailoring Talk. Um, I really, really have grown to love podcasting as much as it does put extra strains and demands on my already busy schedule with my day job but I I really do love it and please do keep your feedback coming uh, via Instagram at Tailoring Talk Podcast Um, you can also email the show directly at tailoringtalkpodcast at gmail.com please remember to subscribe rate and review you can also click the share button in your player to send the show on to people you know and as ever if you're enjoying tailoring talk and feel compelled to throw some change our way and support the show you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash roberto rivilla have a great week or weekend if you're listening to this on the day it goes out and i will see you on the next one